anytime the Lakers are brought up, it's typically something negative at this stage. Kind of that's kind of where they are right now, and. I'm sick of, even myself, I'm sick of being negative about the team, of just kind of where the team is sitting, where they're ranked in the Western Conference, why this player chose to go that place or that place. And I saw a tweet a little bit earlier today, and I think to me, I don't know if it put things into perspective, but I'm like, all right, so let's see. Are are the Lakers, they could be one of two things right now. I think the conversation about the Lakers right now that's come up is, okay, you know what, they didn't do much in the offseason, but is that a good thing? Is it a bad thing? And and to be honest with you, I don't think there's really time is going to tell whether the Lakers were smart about not making moves, whether they were lucky about guys choosing different locations or different spots to go play. Um, But this is what I've heard as far as looking at both of those. Is this a weak market? Is it smarter to hold your assets and wait? Um, and like I mentioned, I think time's going to clear a lot of that up. Here's what I do know, and I think this is part of the problem with making a case that, hey, I love the Lakers' patience. Here's the problem with that that theory there. If somebody is out there saying that the market wasn't strong, the Lakers couldn't go out there and you know obviously make a good move or make a big move or make a, a an impactful move that they felt like, all right, we're in the top tier now. We're hanging with the Nuggets. We're hanging with the Timberwolves. We're hanging with the Mavs, and we're hanging with the Oklahoma City Thunder. I think those are – most people would agree those are the top four teams in the Western Conference, and there are tiers. And um, and once we get to, to uh, training camp in October, we'll have obviously kind of a better idea where everybody stands. Whether it was – I think that thing that I pay the most attention to is the problem for me to give the Lakers the benefit of the doubt I don't think the plan was where they're sitting. I think we could look at where they're sitting and say, hey, you know what, that didn't happen, and maybe that's going to be beneficial down the road. You know what, why would they pay that much money for uh, another guy down the road? They, they're, Where they're sitting right now, I don't think this was the plan. So let me give you kind of some examples, because I, I think a, a few more things have happened here in these last couple of days. Obviously, we know this. They tried to get Clay Thompson, and they couldn't. Um. They even offered more money in an extra year, and they still couldn't get Clay Thompson. He ended up in Dallas. They were interested in DeMar DeRozan. He ends up with the Sacramento Kings. I don't think that's too much of a shock for me personally because um, last week I was talking to Sedano right before I was about to do Lakers talk. George and I were talking. It's like, why would he take the mid-level? What what makes you think that DeMar DeRozan is going to take the mid-level? He's 34, about to be 35, still has value in the league. And his three-year, $74, $75 million uh, deal that he just got, the sign and trade that he got with the Sacramento Kings, proves that point, right? If you can – is there still value for DeMar DeRozan? There is. But they tried to get Klay Thompson. They failed. DeMar DeRozan they had interest in. He went somewhere else. Buddy Heald publicly said that it was a call from Steve Kerr that closed the deal for him to go to the Golden State Warriors. The latest one today, I think, to add to the mix of all this is – They obviously at one point wanted Dan Hurley. Dan Hurley was a coach that they wanted. And this morning, right before, you know, Travis and I are about to start, I'm looking at the details and I'm like, oh, Dan Hurley signed an extension with Connecticut. What are the details of that deal? It says six years, $50 million. I'm like, wait a minute here. What do you mean Dan Hurley signed for six years, $50 million? Lakers offered him six years, $70 million. Why would he pick UConn over the Los Angeles Lakers? I'm not even going to get into the details of of how it happened, and I don't even think that's important to my argument. But any way you want to slice and dice the offseason, however you want to put it, I do think there's something that's very, very clarifying, and, and I think is is it's the foundation of what's happened this entire offseason. The Lakers have not been able to close a deal. They're not here in this position that they're in because this is the position that they wanted to be in. They're here in this position because a lot of other people told them no. That's That would be my only – for anyone trying to make an argument that, no, Lakers are fine, they're better off this way. Well, maybe they're better off this way, but this wasn't the plan. I know they wanted Clay Thompson. I know they had interest in DeMar DeRozan. Clearly they had interest in Buddy Heald. You go back for years. And Dan Hurley they had interest in as well. And they wanted Dan Hurley. Even made him an offer. It was reported six years, $70 million. He took six years, $50 million to stay with UConn. Um, so whether 
you like the, the Lakers' patience this offseason, whether you think this is the right move. I don't think anything that they've done, I don't think they've landed any of their plan A's. By the way, I don't think they've landed their plan B's and their plan C's as well. So um, time is going to tell you whether making a move or not was the smart thing. Time is going to tell you whether making a trade or not um, is the smart move or if it's not. But as we sit here today, it looks like this is probably going to be, for the most part, the Lakers lineup when we get. Maybe there's some small tweaks here and there, but I don't think there's going to be anything significant. Maybe something miraculous happens, some type of sign and trade, or I'm not not type of sign and trade, some type of trade. But as of right now, this is what it seems like is going to be for the Lakers, and I don't think this was their plan. So um, I, if, if I ask the question right now, if the Lakers come back in the offseason or from the offseason – and we start the 2024-2025 season of where we think the Lakers rank in the Western Conference, I do think at the absolute best, and I think I'm trying to be nice here, and I don't even really believe this because I don't think they're going to end up at this spot, I think they're the sixth best team in the Western Conference. I think Denver, Dallas, Minnesota, um, I think the Oklahoma City Thunder, there's four teams right there. I think Sacramento's better than them. There's five. And I would make a case New Orleans. We'll see what happens with Brandon Ingram is better than the Los Angeles Lakers. A lot of people think Memphis is going to be a, a, a top seven team, top six team. There are so many teams I've, I haven't even mentioned. I haven't mentioned the Warriors. I haven't mentioned the Phoenix Suns. I haven't mentioned the Houston Rockets. I haven't mentioned the San Antonio Spurs. Wherever the Lakers are, it does feel like they're going to be right back in the position they've been the last couple of years which is somewhere in that playing range. So that's kind of the reality of the Lakers. And even though as I sit here and I start the show and I talk about how there are a lot of negative stories around the Lakers, I think it's justified. And uh, if the Lakers had come out before the offseason started and the plan was, hey, we just want to let everybody know we like our team. This is the team that we're bringing back. Um, don't expect some big moves. If that was – if I had heard that from the beginning – then that's a different story. But I, I think clearly the Lakers were trying to make moves and weren't able to make any moves. And and even if the moves just didn't make sense, that part is fine. But the Lakers were trying to close deals and were not able to close any of those deals. Um, 